Let's begin the diagnostic manometry testing of the system. You enter it by clicking the icon on the main screen. Here is where you would enter your username and password. After tapping Login, it will bring you to the Patient Data screen. Instructions to this screen are located at the top as shown here. The only field that is required is the Patient ID field. The rest is optional, but most clinics would be entering this information. The date is automatically entered. If for any reason you need to enter a different date, you may do so manually. The Patient ID field is then entered. You may use any combination of letters or numbers in keeping with your particular clinic's standards. The next entry field, also optional, is the patient's first name, the middle initial, and then the patient's last name. Enter the sex of the patient. And now enter the patient's date of birth. The date of birth can be done by a pull-down menu. By selecting the pull-down menu, and tapping twice on the year, you can navigate to the proper year. Make the choices for both the month, and then the day, and the date of birth will be entered in that field. The next field is the indication. There is a pull-down menu. If there's already an indication in place, you may simply tap Enter. You may also enter a new indication in that field. Once the information is entered, it will be there in the pull-down menu going forward. The next field is Physician Name. Again, you may use the pull-down menu to choose an existing name or enter a new physician's name. The next field is the Referring Physician. And finally is the Test Operator. This is the clinician that is actually performing the test. Again, the only required field is the Patient ID field. The rest is optional. Once you've completed that section, tap the Next arrow in the lower right corner of the screen. This will bring you to the setup screen for the M-Compass Manometer, which is referred to as a FOB. It's the handheld manometer that is used in conjunction with the disposable catheter. It is wireless, so there are no direct connections to the tablet PC. Follow the instructions at the top of the screen to activate and test the FOB. The first step is to turn on the Power On button on the FOB. The FOB will go through its own self-diagnostic check. You'll see a series of lights turning on and off. Once that check is completed, you will see that the ON button will be green, the battery button will be green, and the Bluetooth symbol will be flashing a blue LED. At that point, tap the Connect Bluetooth button to the left of the image of the FOB. The Bluetooth light will stop flashing, which indicates that it is now connected and that you have paired the system together to run. Now tap Next to take you to the screen to begin setup of the disposable catheter and connect it to the handheld manometer or FOB. There are two connections that need to be made. The first is the white universal anal canal connector that has four ports. These are pneumatic connectors and they are keyed and can only be inserted in alignment with the arrows on the disposable catheter, which is aligned with the arrow on the top of the fob. Assuring proper alignment and connection assures that the orientation of the measurement balloons is always the same. The connection, when firmly and properly seated, will create a pneumatic seal. The next connection is the three inch long extension tube. One end of the tube connects to the four-way stopcock that's part of the catheter. The other end is connected to the single lure connector, located on the front of the fob next to the anal canal measurement balloon port. Once you have made both connections, tap the fob connected button and verify that the connections are correct and properly sealed. As you follow the instructions at the top of the screen, you will see that it says to turn the lever on the fob to position 2. There is a gray lever on the side of the fob. During setup and use, this lever will have three positions. 
Position 1 is in the down position. Position 2, as shown in this screen, is in the up position. And position 3 is forward, facing the catheter position. The instructions will indicate that it is now time to prime the system. You will need to turn the lever to position 2, as indicated. The software will automatically indicate that you have done so. Now you need to prime the system with 3 cc's of air. As the graphic indicates, you should utilize the provided 5 mm syringe loaded with 3 cc's of air. Connect it to the top of the priming port, which is located under the cover on the top of the fob. You will then press 3 cc's of air into the fob and then into the catheter. You will notice that the four channels of the measurement balloons on the catheter on the distal end will inflate and become firm. The syringe, while holding the plunger down, is removed from the fob. As the instructions indicate, you then now move the lever to position 3, and now you are ready to do a complete test. It is important to note that the four anal canal balloons won't necessarily be as firm as when they were first injected with the 3 cc's of air because they equalize when the syringe is removed, but they will have air pressure in them. By clicking the next arrow in the lower right corner, you will be taken to the prime screen to confirm that the priming process has been done properly. The four balloons have air pressure in them, they are inflated slightly, and you can confirm by tapping the prime button. The next screen describes the proper insertion of the catheter into the patient. There is an illustration at the bottom of the screen depicting the letter P as it appears on the posterior side of the catheter. It is now important to lightly press on each of the four anal canal balloons on the distal end of the catheter to verify that they have air pressure and are inflated. There are four anal canal measurement balloons. There's one located on the posterior side, one on the anterior side, one on the left, and one on the right. Each one of these represents an independent channel and takes their own measurement. The graphic on the screen indicates that the orientation requires that the P be oriented facing the spine. The A should be oriented forward on the patient, and the left and right will be corresponding to the patient's left and right arms. The instructions remind you to lubricate the distal end of the catheter device and instruct the patient to relax. Utilize a standard lubricant to the distal end, the rectal balloon, and the four anal canal balloons. The catheter features a soft, flexible tip, but has enough strength and firmness to be inserted without the use of your finger. Gently insert the catheter through the sphincter to the point where you would be located to the zero location on the catheter. As the graphic shows, there are indicator lines on the catheter. They start at zero, then go to one, two, three, four, and five. With a typical patient, the four anal canal balloons should be just inside the anal verge at catheter position zero. Anal canals range between 20 millimeters and 45 millimeters in length. At this time, if you also choose to measure rectal pressures, which is also part of the M Compass system, you will need to prime the rectal balloon. This is done by taking the provided 60 cc syringe, filling to the 60 cc mark, and connecting it to the open port on the four way stopcock. Then turn the stopcock knob so that it's now open to all three channels. Prime the rectal balloon with the 10 cc's of air. At that time, once you're holding it with the 10 cc's of air, turn the stopcock so that it's now just communicating between the fob and the rectal balloon. 10 cc's of air are needed because this is an air-charged manometry catheter, and the air is used to transfer the pressure levels back to the pressure sensors in the portable manometer. Without having any air in the system, you would not be able to take a rectal pressure. During the implementation of the device, you will be inflating and deflating the rectal balloon. You must always maintain 10 cc's of air in that rectal balloon to maintain the ability to take pressure. Once you have connected the rectal balloon and it's inflated, 
Tapping the next arrow in the lower right corner of the screen will take you to the testing area.